This is Stuart Stroyley for Sailing World Magazine. I'm reporting today from the Weymouth Portland National Sailing Academy on the south coast of England. In just a few months, this site will host the sailing competition for the 2012 Olympics. Today it's a hub of more daily activity, opti lessons, school kids coming here to windsurf, paddle, row, kayak, all sorts of things. It is quite a busy center, even on a cold day in May. There's also a few high-level competitions going on. The Dutch team is here selecting their women's match racing team for the 2012, Olympi 2012 Olympics, as are the Americans, and that's why I'm here. Today we finished up the semifinals, which means we have the final two, which will battle over the next two days to see who will represent the United States in this women's match racing competition. Sally Barkow and Anna Tunnicliffe are the two skippers that made it through. The semifinal pairing of Barkow and Tullock was expected to be quite competitive. Both of those sailors have spent a lot of time with their teams on the World Cup circuit and both have performed well. Tullock is ranked number 10 in the world, Barkow is number 6. Entering into the day, Tullock had a 3-2 lead and then she won the first match, which featured a very interesting finish where Tullock was able to shed three penalties and finish before Barkow was able to make it back and get across the line. This, had, this gave her a 4-2 lead and a semblance of some momentum, but Barkow was quickly able to quash that. She won the next four matches to move into the semifinals. It was quite a performance in some very difficult conditions. Yeah, I feel really good. I think we really stuck together as a team, and uh, it was just an awesome series against Jenny. They're a really strong team. We knew it was going to be tough. We didn't think it was going to be that tough at the beginning. <laughs> kind of put ourselves in a, uh, a, a tougher situation than we wanted, but uh, you know, like I said, it was really about a, a team effort here, Dave and, and the girls, and we just kept plugging away with what we know and what we were good at, so and that was enough in the end. One is we were, as Sally mentioned, we were a little late maybe jibing on the soak line. Um, so in a couple of the races we jived a little bit late, so she was able to roll over us and, um, and soak into the zone. So that was probably a, a mistake on our part of timing of jibe. But then also it was so much easier to surf the waves on starboard. So it was pretty easy to like get on a really good wave, surf, and just and cruise over somebody. And um, yeah, I think we had to make sure that we, we jived early enough that we could hold them up really hot and then still have another job in for the mark, which we, we did the last couple of races, so that was a huge improvement. You know, Dave, going into this regatta, said expect all close races. You know, imagine every race you might be finishing overlapped at the finish, and you just got to make sure that you work on the, the last inches and, and do the things you know, so. When you lose a series like that against a really good team, there's a lot of moments that you can think of that maybe had we done this differently, we would have won that race, or had we done that differently. I think um, we had an opportunity yesterday to go up 3-0, and I think had we gone up 3-0, then we would have been pretty strong mentally, at least against their team. And, um, and to lose that race and then be 2-1, I think let them back in the game a little bit more. And I think if I could put a turning point on it, I mean, that wasn't a turning point for sure, but had it gone the other way, I think that would have been a really stellar um, opening day for us and instead it was all on this morning with a 3-2 scoreline and um, we thought we were stoked after our first race and our seven penalties I don't even know how many we had to spend in the race that we still won so um, we were pretty fired up and I don't think we ever had a downturn we just had a lot of really close races against their team and a lot of really close finishes that went their way and um, they sailed really well as well they're really fast and really good sailors and really good match racers so the best to them but um yeah it was a tough series we had two races that we were leading on the top mark and lost the race i think today in the waves especially was the reason teams were able to pass from behind pretty easily it was once you jived on the starboard the waves were super surfable and so ordinarily you could play out the luffing duel fight pretty easily and in waves like that if one boat actually gets a surf then they're able to pass the other boat, break the overlap, and sometimes even jibe across. And so in medium breeze and big waves, it makes it a very different game plan. And I think perhaps we are a little bit slow to address that on our downwind tactics. Um, after losing one race from being ahead and getting past that way, we then passed on the second race and then lost on the third race the same way. So it's kind of hard to, to think through the waves and how, how you actually play the game differently downwind based on that. Um, yeah, we were just looking for some good races and uh, looking to execute what we've been practicing and uh, we were really psyched that we came out 6 so We wanted to keep the series as short as possible um, so we could be rested going into the finals. Um, but uh, it was good sailing and 
Team Rubble, they uh, did a fantastic job. I've come a long way and pushed us hard, so we're always we're like we came out on top. I mean, you know, they had a, we knew that they were going to have a very tight series going into it, and um, but uh, you know, for us, we just keep doing what we're doing, and you know, even this regard of the past two or three regattas, we've had very difficult races, and you know, still managed to come out on top. So we're just going to try and keep uh, keep sailing the way we sail and execute the way we know how to, and you know, hopefully it'll work out again this time too. Tomorrow's final is scheduled to start at 10 a.m. local time here at Portland. The weather, well, my colleague from the local press said it's broken here. It's expected to still be cold. Hopefully there'll be wind so we can get through this thing quickly. They will take two days, however. The plan is not to let this thing get decided over the course of one day, no matter how quickly the races go off and no matter how well one sailor is doing versus the other. One way or another, we won't know who's going to represent the United States until sometime on Monday at the earliest. In the meantime, you can keep track of results on our Facebook page, and we'll have a full report as soon as the racing is over. For Sailing World Magazine, this is Stuart Storley reporting from the Weymouth Portland National Sailing Academy in England.